In example four, we want to be solving a system by the addition method. In order to do this, we're given a system of equations solved using the addition method. Number one, we're going to write both equations with x and y variables on the left side of the equal sign and constants on the right. Number two, we're going to write one equation above the other, lining up corresponding variables. If one of the variables in the top equation has the opposite coefficient of the same variable in the bottom equation, we're going to add the equations together, eliminating one variable. If not, then we're going to use multiplication by a non-zero number so that one of the variables in the top equation has the opposite coefficient of the same variable in the bottom equation. Then add the equations to eliminate the variable. Number three, we're going to solve the resulting equation for the remaining variable. Number four, we're going to substitute that value into one of the original equations and solve for the second variable. And number five, we're going to check the solution by substituting the values into the other equation. So for example four, we're going to solve this, the given system of equations by addition. So the first equation is x plus 2y equals negative 1. And the second equation is negative x plus y equals 3. Now, we can see here that both equations are already set equal to a constant. So we have the variables on one side and we have the constants on the other. And notice that the coefficient of x in the second equation is negative 1, which is the opposite of the coefficient, coefficient of x in the first equation, which is positive 1. So we can add the two equations to eliminate x without needing to multiply by a constant. So here we have our two equations. And so then when we add them together, we're getting a result of the following. So negative x, x minus x is going to give you 0, and that 0 plus 3y, which is equal to 2. And now that we have eliminated x, we can then solve the resulting equation for y. So to solve for y, we divide both sides by 3, and now we get y, which is equal to 2 thirds. The next step is, then we're going to substitute this value for y into one of the original equations and solve for x doesn't matter which original equation you use, you're still going to get the same result. So we're going to use equation number two. So we have negative x plus y equals three. Substituting y equals two thirds into that equation. So we get negative x plus two thirds equals three. And then we're going to subtract two thirds to both sides. So now we have negative x, which is equal to three minus two thirds. And three is the same thing as three over one, so that we can find a common denominator to subtract these. So 3 over 1 is the same thing as 9 over 3, and we're going to subtract 2 thirds to get 7 thirds. And now we need to solve for x, so in order to do that, we need to multiply both sides or divide both sides by the negative, and we get x, which is equal to negative 7 over 3. So the solution to this system of equation is the x, variable, x point, which is negative 7 over 3, and the y value is 2 thirds. And then if we check the solution in the first equation, we have x plus 2y equals negative 1. So if we have negative 7 thirds plus 2 times 2 thirds, which becomes negative 7 thirds plus 4 thirds, which is negative 3 over 3, which gives you negative 1, which equals the right side of the equation, so therefore it is true. Now, we gain an important perspective on systems of equations by looking at the graphical representation. So if you look at figure 5, we can see to find that the equations intersect at the solution, which is right here. And so we do not need to ask whether there may be a second solution because observing the graph confirms that the system has exactly one solution at negative 7 thirds, 2 thirds.